So yeah, it's great. That you know what? I am. <laughs> it is great to see you guys. Let's uh, thank God for just the worship team and I want to for the worship team and also for new for guests, new new uh, men and women that have come to the mission have come into the ministry and their families and friends. It is great, great to have you. Amen? Amen. You know, I often, uh, I often think about God tells us that when one, one sinner repents and turns to God, that all of, all of heaven rejoices, right? And I, and I think we have trouble with that because we don't feel worthy of, of applause. But all, every angel... When a person comes to God through Christ, goes wild. God goes wild. The, the angels applaud, and they're excited about you. Now, maybe somebody's not excited about you. Maybe you're not excited about you. But I got to tell you, God is. And that's what has to change in our lives, that we would believe God and stop believing ourselves, our feelings, and even other people. And once we believe God... Life changes radically, amen? amen? And we saw that this weekend on our Friday Night Graduates. Again, I want to uh, just acknowledge and honor those who made it through a, a year at the mission and in discipleship. So, again, for those who graduated, would you just stand up for a second? If you're here, I know some. Yeah, man, come on. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Come on. Yeah, man. Now, you can ask them. It's not easy when you're in real discipleship. It's not easy because, listen, and, and that, that's why we're finding freedom because we, we really, we, we share the word of God, but we also have to learn to be honest with one another. And it's a hard thing being honest. I, I want to, isn't it hard to be weak and to confess your sins and deal with issues that you really avoided most of your life? One person out of 800, yeah. But it really is. But see, that's where the freedom is. Now, I want to be clear. The freedom is only found in Christ. Amen? Amen? But when we come to God for the very thing that we need to, which is to be forgiven of our sin, which is where all our problems lied, then we find relief. We find comfort that we're finally accepted. And this morning before worship, that seemed to be what God was saying um, to me, that it's still a, a real big issue, that we, we, we really struggle to accept ourselves. Now, I, I lived my whole life unacceptable. My whole life before Christ, 32 years, I lived hiding in shame and guilt. I lived trying to meet my own needs, and I hurt a lot of people. Because I was selfish. Because I was self-centered. Because everything re revolved around what I thought I needed. Come on. And therefore, I was a user of people, not a lover of people. Right? Okay. And this is the sin nature that we're all born with. We didn't have to earn that. We were born sinful, separated from God because of sin. The, the choice that Adam made in the garden... When God told him, don't eat from that tree, and he, and he chose to disobey God, then sin came, and all men died. All men. So you're not different than your neighbor. You're not worse than your neighbor, right? <clears throat> God says the whole world is guilty before God and deserving of hell and punishment. Sadly enough, we don't hear that enough in the church. We don't deserve anything good. And see, if we have the wrong mindset, if we don't have understanding, then we can walk around still being selfish, having no gratitude, and having expectations that are not met in which we are upset and frustrated by. You see, for me, uh, and for many, uh, I, I always knew that I was sinful. I always knew that I was guilty. I was like the thief on the cross until I heard the good news of the gospel. 
And even then, it was very hard to accept that he would love me. I, I didn't know there was a liar out there. I didn't know there was a devil. I didn't know there was demons. I didn't know there was a spiritual battle. All I knew is I was wicked and shameful and full and weighed down with guilt, with no God and no hope in the world, like God says the whole world is. And I heard the good news, and I wanted to believe that. But there was that liar that whispered those words that I still hear from many people. Hey, those God people, they're good people, and you're not like them. Maybe you heard that voice. Well, that's Satan, and he's a liar. Because what we recognize is that there are no good people. I'm in good company. And the extreme other side of that is the person who compares their sin against another person. They're not as bad as that guy. Come on. See, God is going to show you that on either side, both deserve punishment. Both deserve hell. There's no one. And this is why the good news of the gospel has come to us. The light of the world has come. The good news that... Jesus was God, that our sins are, that he died and suffered a death to save us from hell. And that each person has to come to Christ for one thing, for the forgiveness of their own sins. Not the sins of somebody else, but for their own sin. And see, that's the foundation of which we preach here at the mission and at the retreat. We tell the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the whole truth. Amen? Amen. That people ought not to come to God because he's got a good plan for them. Or he's got a wife or a house or a car. You see, all those things are going to fade. Amen? Amen. Or that 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 if you come to God, he's going to bless you with money. You see, that's that's a gospel that will not last. But when a person realizes that they deserve hell and they're under the wrath of God... And that the only way out is Jesus Christ, and he has done it. He's paid it. It's paid in full. And they've escaped torment and wrath and punishment, and they received love and forgiveness. Come on. They then can rejoice and give that out to others. Amen. It's going to come from a grateful heart. Well, what are you grateful for? I think Terry said it well, or Al said it well when he prayed. Al, you did. He said, if God did nothing else for me, he's done enough. I was going to hell, now I'm not. I deserved eternity in in punishment, and and I don't know what that would look like. We get some glimpses in the Bible of what types of punishment there is. The eternal fire, the eternal torment. He said, well, this is not a loving God. It absolutely is a loving God because God is just. And he must punish sin, and he's done that on his own son. He made a way out. that He wants no one to perish. Not one person does he want to go to hell. No God, no God's heart today, because the word says that he desires that ready all men repent and turn to Christ for the forgiveness of their sins and, the, and receive the gift of eternal life. So if that's God's heart, then who says no to God? We do. You see, I often say that there's many parents in the room. And do you want your child, and isn't it wonderful when your child chooses to love you unconditionally? You see, that's God. He doesn't force people to love him. He doesn't put guilt trips on you. He just tells the truth. And people have a choice to come and follow him or walk away. Well, I'm glad that he gave me the the understanding, and he gives us the grace and the faith to believe, to call on him, but then to, to choose him and to follow him with, with all of me, the good, the bad, and the ugly, amen? See, where else can I go to find love? Where else have you gone to find comfort in the very thing that he forgave? The very thing you're ashamed of, the very thing that it's hard to face, he says, I know what it is, and I love you. Come on, look at me. I love you, he's saying. I paid for that. But the the feelings are real. The experience I'm having is real with this confusion or this this bondage, whatever it may be. He says, I know it's real, but it's not the truth. 
And I want you to cover the lies with the truth. And learn to live and have self-control over that lust, over that confusion, over that problem. Trusting me with it that I will deliver you. And I've watched God do that not just in my life, but many, 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 many lives. It's powerful. Today we're going to be talking about, it, it may be a topic that we've talked about, and I, I know we have. But it is the foundation in Christ in which will set you free. God's forgiveness towards us. Forgiveness is a gift from God. It's offered to us, but it's not deserved. Amen? One of the things that one of our graduates said who is a husband and a father of two young, beautiful kids. He just graduated last night. And one of the things he said when he came into the ministry, he had been a believer, but he had been, he had been bound by unforgiveness and bitterness, which, which was painful, which led to going outside God for comfort, whether it was drugs or alcohol or whatever comforts uh, are, are, we're believing will help us that are lies, that are really meant to kill us. And, and, and being a Christian and still living in sin, it, the burdens even double and triple. Because I know I'm not supposed to be living this way. But he came here. And, and in time, one of the things he said was, I know that I'm forgiven. And I didn't think it could happen. I know that I'm forgiven. I was bitter and angry. And, and God, it was my sin. It wasn't anyone else's. But I had a face that I wasn't the father. I had a face that I wasn't the husband God wanted me to be. Not, I wasn't the father. I had to face my sin. You see, the very thing that's killing you is the very thing Christ paid for. Come on. And if he loved us when we were yet sinners, how much more now does he love us that we're reconciled to God through Christ? Amen. If he loved you when you were out there and didn't know him and, 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 and deserving of hell... And, and, and had no clue of God and were just vile and wicked and selfish if he loved you then how much more now that you've come to the Christ you see his love will be what you walk in for freedom if we don't understand his love, if we don't understand the foundation of what, who Christ is and what he's done for us and receive that for our very own, we will be shackled. We will still think of ourselves as less than or unworthy or in, unable to, to be who he called us to be. All those are lies because in Christ you are forgiven. In Christ you have all you need for godly and holy living. He accepts you and will heal you and change you. And your sin doesn't surprise him. He's, he's wanting you to believe him and surrender your life. Over and over we see that. <clears throat> With life, we had another gentleman who, who left the no, he left the program early, but he still contacts us today. And he was another man who was married, who was brought up in the faith, and he had two beautiful kids. And every few months he'd take off and and and, and get high and and it was a pattern for years. You see, he hated himself. And he came here on all kinds of psych meds. You know, a bag full. And very similar in the same way. A few months went by. I said, man, what's God done for you, bro? He says, he's forgiven me. <sighs> wow. See, if we don't really face our sin, we can never really appreciate Christ. If we, don't, if we don't see what it deserved. You see, but we don't have to get stuck there. See, Satan wants you to be stuck there. Look what you've done. How could you do that? You've blown it. <clears throat> you see, you're a Christian. You should, look what you did. See, we must respond in truth to say, yes, I am guilty. I have done that thing. And I confess it to the Lord and he's forgiven me and I'm starting over today. i got to conquer the lies with the truth of God. Yeah, but everybody hates me, but he doesn't. 
Yeah, but everyone's judging me. He loves me. See, we can't live for man anymore. Your problem, my problem, our problem is that we're sometimes living for what people think. Look to the right or the left and looking back in front and say, do you see God? Is God, in, is God your neighbor? What human being other than Jesus was God? None. So why do we please people and live for people? Because of insecurity. Because of fear. Because of unbelief. Not understanding that Jesus is God and he loves us. And that he, his love is enough for you. And just because you may be in this room today saying, well, he's not really enough for me yet. At least that's honest. But what can you do about that? Are you left uh, uh, confused and without? No. You see, just because he's not enough for you, right, right where you are, you can say, God, would you increase my faith? Would you be enough for me? And he is waiting to hear that from you. And all of a sudden, the idols in your life and the people in your life, they don't seem to be that important anymore. Oh, we can go on and on of the men who have put God above their wives and their jobs and their children. John Frazier was one of those guys. You know, he said that the hardest thing to do was to leave his family and his kids and his job. And he had a company in his pocket. The hardest thing was, was to leave it all and then not even be able to call them every day and rely on them. Because he was relying on people to get identity. And when those things were gone, who am I? And we become desperate to hold on to whatever gives us some type of meaning and purpose. Come on. You see, that's where jealousy and rage comes in and murder. That's where lust come in, right? Because we're trying to meet a need that only God can meet. And he's already met it. So today, don't sit here feeling guilty, but let the Spirit have his way with you in healthy, godly conviction. With truth that, that goes to the very bone and marrow, and it reveals the motives and the intentions of your heart. That you would bring that in sincerity and truth to God to say, Lord, here am I. And receive today his love. That's what happened to this sinner. <laughs> oh, I'm not just a whack job and loud and excited and because I'm manifesting that. That's because I have joy that I'm forgiven. That I'm not going to hell. See, I just remember that. That my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Yeah. And, and, and walking with God, I fail, I sin, I mess up, I, I don't practice it. But I walk in the freedom that he loves me. And he gave his life for me. I don't love him enough. I don't, do, I, I don't love him with all my heart, mind, and soul. But I ask him, help me to do that. I, I ask him for everything. I, I can't even breathe without him. I'm dependent on God, not on you, not on my wife, not on this ministry. I'm sharing, I'll tell the rocks about Christ. I wish I could say one of the rocks got born again, but. <laughs> God's forgiveness towards us. Jesus said, forgive them, Father. They do not know what they are doing. Luke 23, 34. I've often give, given this depiction of, let's just say all of us, because God says we're all born guilty without God, right? Without hope. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's just picture all of us in this room are together, and Jesus is on the cross. And we don't even, we've heard of him. We, we heard that he's doing miracles. There's this guy baptizing. We don't even know what that is. What, what are they going swimming? What's going on? But while he's hanging up there, and, and, and while he's suffering this death of a criminal, we, under the cross, are living our lives. We're trying to be moms and dads and fathers and sons. But see... Christ is dying, and while he's dying, his blood fall, is falling off the cross, and some of, some of his blood is hitting us. 
while we're cursing our neighbor, while we're screwing people, while we're jealous, while we're living in sexual sin, while we're perverted or greedy, lustful, come on, while we're lying to one another, hating, right? we're sinning openly and, and his blood is falling on us. We don't even know what's going on. And Jesus cries out, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. This is the love of God. <laughs> Willing to forgive us, ignorant and unbelieving, without hope and without him. Acts 17, 30. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, not to come to him for a good life. Come on. These are the words of Christ. He commands. He's not, uh, uh, maybe, they, maybe they could come. He commands that all people everywhere repent. From what's repentance? Repent from your unbelief and believing in yourself or someone other than Christ. Whatever your God is, if it isn't Jesus Christ, repent from that unbelief. And repent for your sin. Well, does that mean I got to change myself? No, no, that's impossible. I couldn't change me. There was nothing I could do in my own strength or power to change the wicked heart. I had to repent, meaning acknowledge I am a sinner. Hallelujah. And, and to go to him to receive the forgiveness of what? My sins. Turning from my sin and turning into Christ that he would forgive me. In him, Ephesians 1, 7, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Without the blood, there is no removal of sin. Take Christ away and we all go to hell. If God chose to make people, after they rebelled, and all men died, and chose to, for us to be under his wrath and condemnation, that would be his choice. That means that no one on, in any of the universe, for any time since creation would be able to be with God and go to heaven. No one can get in. It's over. No, see, it's, see, without Christ, without the shedding of blood, without God coming and being the perfect lamb, because who else could be the perfect lamb? Who else could be spotless but God himself? That's why we don't qualify, guys. See, right now, a works gospel is just going right out the window. It's destructive. A works religion, anything that says you have to do this, that, or this, is a lie from hell. I don't care what religion, even if it names Christ. If it teaches you that you can be justified by your effort, it is from Satan. End of story. Because you can't argue with the word of God. Well, you can, and that's our problem. We're too busy arguing and causing strife and division. Have nothing to do with those men. If someone calls himself a brother and is divisive and lustful and greedy and immoral. See, their Christ doesn't lead to holiness. It leads to money. It leads to self. But because of the blood of Christ. See, where are you in the sacrifice? Where are you in, 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 in earning heaven? Where are you in that picture? If it's only by the blood that there had to be a sacrifice to pay the penalty that God took his wrath out on his son, that he became sin for us. If the penalty was hell and he came to save the day, where are we in that picture of saving ourselves? Nowhere. But to mercifully call on the one who did it all. Isn't that fantastic? It's beautiful. This mic is. Isn't it? 1 Timothy 2 5. Again, God's forgiveness towards us. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. There is no other mediator. People will tell you there's other ways. No. There's one mediator between God and man, Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
That's a narrow way, John. You're telling me that all other faiths, all other religions are lies? Yes, God is telling you they're lies. Jesus says, I, 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 Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through me. What other way is there? There is none. And for that we suffer, folks. If you, will, if you have found the only way, if your sins have been forgiven, if you have been receiving the gift of the whole uh, of eternal life, then will you love him and follow him because you've escaped hell? Is he your everything or are you looking for another? I, I don't know. But where else can you go to find eternal life? Nowhere. Hebrews 7, 25, Therefore he, Christ, is also able to save to the uttermost. Listen, save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. I mean, let's, come on, wait a minute. I, I blew it, right? I'm not sure when, right? Let's, I blew it the other day. You're saying I'm still loved even though I sinned? Yes. Are you saying that in my sin or my anger or my frustration, are you saying that Jesus Christ loves me and can save me to the uttermost and is always making intercession for me? Yes. yes. The Holy Spirit even prays for me when I don't know what to pray for. Amen. I, I sin. God says my grace abounds in your sin. What? You're all messed up. You're freaking out and the Holy Spirit's praying for you. Jesus says, if you sin, I am your advocate. God is for you, man. So many of us have a, a skewed thinking of God, and we're not understanding. We're not believing the truth, and it's affecting us, and yet he still loves you. And yet he's still orchestrating things in your life to bring you to that place of real faith. Amen? Amen. Ain't that great? Because if we really believe God's for you and with you, you can do everything. You can conquer everything. You can conquer every idol. You can conquer every flesh, sin. You can, you can do the will of God and the works of God. So many are doing it. I mean, I just look at, I would see, I, I'll take Robin Phillip, for instance, right? If you knew them before, there was no hope. Yeah, they did testimonies on the radio. If you heard their life, you'd be like, what? That guy's running that? He's doing this? Yeah. What the heck? How does that happen? God. God happened. God happened, man! I don't care what you're struggling with in this room. God happened. He'll deliver you. I mean, go on and on. Carl, I mean, Al, look, come on. It's like, it's like, it's overwhelming. Yeah, there are those that fall away. There are those that reject God. I'm not talking about them right now. We're talking about you who, who have Christ. We got issues. We got some areas of unbelief. We got some strongholds that God is breaking, amen? But man, when he does, look at you now. Look at you now. Huh? Say hello to my little friend, the Bible. Psalm 86, verse 5. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Do you really believe that? Do you really believe God loves you? Today, there's going to be some healing today. I believe it. I don't care if it's one person. There's going to be some healing today. Some people are going to gain understanding that they're loved because if you know you're loved by God, it's over. Because then you don't need it from the other person. Hallelujah. And they're going to be excited too. No longer do you have to try to work for their love. and the, Right? When someone is trying to get their needs met through a person, it is taxing. Taxing. It is overwhelming. Because you feel like it's you, you're the one, like, you're their guard. You're, you're the if you don't love them the right way, it's over. They're pissed and angry and upset and disgruntled. Right? That's a lot of pressure. 
Listen, you need to rely on God, not me. I'm going to fail you. I'm good. I'm accepted. I'm redeemed, right? And you are too. Now, that doesn't mean uh, that gives you a blank check to, to be ungodly and treat people wicked. No, no, no. We're not talking about that. We're talking about... Your needs are fully met in Christ. Are you relying fully on God when people don't love you? Are you okay? <clears throat> Acts 13, 38 and 39. Therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, through Jesus Christ, everyone who believes is set free from every sin. A justification you were not able to obtain under the law of Moses. Acts 13. In Christ, you're... <laughs> Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin. Is that freedom? If you knew that your sins were completely forgiven and you're completely loved forever, past, present, future, and that you're secure, you think that would help you? Yeah. Hello? I mean, that's what, that's what we need. That's what we need. And oftentimes what the devil will use is in the sanctification process, you're a Christian, you're excited, you get tested, and you fail. Then what? God don't love you anymore? You see, he's not a person that he should lie. Amen. Your father may or your mother may have lied. They may have not loved you. As long as you did what they wanted, everything was good. But the minute you screwed up, you, you know, they hated you, right? That's not, that's not love. Love is unconditional. Mm -hmm. And when we, when we love God because he first loved us, we begin in the sanctification process, we begin to become holy. That means we, we, we don't leave him. We confess our sin. He helps us. He gives us control, self-control over our sin. He is the atoning, uh, Ephesians 1, 7. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for us, but also for the sins of the whole world. See, Christ already paid it. Amen? Amen. What sin did he leave out on the cross? None. Is your sin paid for? You say that, you believe that? Yeah. Then live like it. Amen. Come on. Freedom, baby. Not freedom to continue sinning, because then if you, there are some that teach, hey, Christ died for me, my sins are forgiven, I can live how I want. God says that person, run away from them. You know why? He says they're liars and the truth isn't in them. Right. If you say, let me use Christ's forgiveness... For a license, for lascivious living, you are a liar. That guy is dead. Stay away from him. Because I, we, we often talk, and it's been a theme every week now, every teaching centered around Christ will always equate to one thing, godliness and holy living. If you don't have that, if people are not teaching you that, that's, that's the wrong place to be in. It's, then, then it's about itching ears and your comforts and it's not the truth every teaching of Christ is centered around godliness and holiness amen isn't it great there's great freedom in Christ to live holy it's okay yeah but I've sinned okay it's forgiven talk to God about it you're still walking you're still holy in Christ amen okay <clears throat> So let it be clear that Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. So if you sit here today and you're thinking, well, I don't think he can forgive this. It's a lie. Yeah, but I had an abortion. I murdered somebody. I killed somebody. I was perverted. I hated my mom. In Christ, your sins are forgiven. All of them. But I wasn't a good husband. I know. I love you.
you still. <sighs> but I was ashamed of your name, Lord. I know. Do you love me? <coughs> yeah, but I blew it. <sighs> Come on. I love you. Who doesn't need that kind of love? Then why do you resist it so much? Come on. Receive it today. Receive that. Because once you receive that fully, you're going to be able to give it out to your very enemies. Oh, you're going to learn to say, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I hated you. I held that against you. I remembered your sin because I'm hurt. Oh, I was bitter. All of that leads to death. Acts 4, 10 through 12. Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you. Well, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Again, Jesus is the narrow way. These are going to be some hard conversations you have with family and friends. These are going to be some hard conversations you have in the workplace and as God sends you out to share the good news with Jews or Muslims or even some religions that name Christ but are not believing that it's by grace alone, but by some work or effort on your part. It's going to be some tough conversations, but I tell you this. Do you love them? Well, then you'll tell them. As awkward and how difficult as it may be. But first, you must have it for yourself. Amen? Amen? You must believe. You must trust and know. Acts 10, 42, 43. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his, ready, name. Not through going to confession. Not through feeding the poor. Come on. So many people are still trying to earn God's love by doing good things. Were you brought up in a performance-based religion or a performance-based home? If you were, then you have a tendency to try to please God in order to be accepted. I, I was one of those. Not everyone is. So we, if it doesn't speak to you, then it doesn't speak to you. That was the worst. Not being accepted. My father was a perfectionist. I mean, if it wasn't his way, if it wasn't his how, it, he didn't know God, though. I didn't know. We didn't know God as a family. But, man, that was hard to live under. You couldn't even, you know, sit right without feeling uncomfortable. You know what I mean? And so, really, later on in life, when I came to Christ and, and God became my God, I, my, I, I forgave my father, and he hated me because he lost me to God. Ain't that crazy? Because he lost his power. He lost his identity. Because he was trying to meet a need because he hated himself all his whole life. Come on. So when, when that gets messed with, people freak out. Right? You see, he put what he had on other people. See, you can only give what you got, amen? You can only give what you got. So let's be honest with what we got. But then if we say Christ, let us understand what we got. And that's where you'll start to grow in freedom, Amen? Joel 
Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Do you believe God is gracious and compassionate? Then are you gracious and compassionate? Dun, 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 dun. I don't know. But see, whatever you believe, therefore you are. Whatever you believe, there you will do. See, I, belief equals behavior. If I don't believe there's anything wrong with adultery and sleeping with other women, then if I believe it's okay, then I'll, I'll do it. Because I believe it's okay. Now you can apply this to anything you want, but see, of, of, of what, what you believe, if it's not the word of God, you're in trouble. End of story. Because what, who, who is God when you decide what's true or not? You make yourself God. Therefore, you judge everybody. You judge the law. You become judge, and it is severe with you. It is going to be severe with you, with God. All right? Because all that's pride. <clears throat> Acts 2.38, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Man, a lot of us, like we got this gift, the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God. When you believe it, it, it enters us. It, it's God on the inside, right? It's the Spirit that gives us power and understanding and discernment. It's the Spirit that gives us wisdom and teaches us about God. It's the Spirit that gives gifts to men. It's not us. I mean, I'm being more and more sensitive to that. I recognize, I don't know what I'm doing, what I'm saying, but he does it, he leads me, and I love that. Amen. Even on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, it doesn't matter. Because I'm open, God, I don't have no understanding. I, you, you are the one. So use your, in the spirit, lead me what I'm going to say. Lead me where I'm going to go. You see, I can't take any credit. But see, we look to people to give them praise and credit. Let's stop doing that, can we? Whatever gift you got, God gave it to you. Who, who deserves the praise? God. That doesn't mean we don't honor one another. That doesn't mean we don't respect one another. Come on, of course we do. But let us never give credit to a man for what God did. Come on. Oh, I know we get tempted. We want to take it. Oh, they love my singing. <laughs> I sing so angelically. I am. Uh, singer <laughs> who gave you that voice God. okay <laughs> right but we want to you got to remember what was Satan's number one issue pride. pride but it said that he it says that he looked at himself you ready because he was beautiful and he adorned him what he adorned his what himself, himself. Right? Pride. Like he forgot he was created. Like at one point, he didn't even, he didn't even exist. You know what I'm saying? Oh, how'd I get here? Wow, look at me. I'm something else. I'm fantastic. Isn't it? Don't we see that in the world all the time? Did you see my house? Built it with my two hands. It's, it's so, like now that we know, right, we have hump mercy on people that don't know. God gives gifts to men. Go free and use them, but, but stay humble. We're going to talk about that in a second. So we're still on God, God's forgiveness towards man, okay? Luke 7, 47, 48. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. They're talking about that. This story was the story of the prostitute who was forgiven. For she loved much. But he who is forgiven little loves little, and he said to her, your sins are forgiven. See, if when we minimize what Christ did by forgiving your sin, if you minimize that, if you rationalize that, 
If you think that you're better than other people in some way, if you don't, if you don't agree with God that you deserve hell and, tor and torment for eternity, if you minimize that in any way, you will be somewhat prideful and you'll never understand the full value of forgiveness. You'll, you'll struggle with gratefulness. Period. Because you're better than other people. See, when we die, we won't stand in different lines. Prostitutes in this line, the drug addicts in this line, the greedy in that line, the lustful in that line. You know, those that uh, uh, were jealous in another line. And so, you know, depending on the severity of the sin, we're not going to say, hey, I'm better than that guy. I'm definitely getting it. You know what I'm saying? Never cursed once. I was faithful all oh, my marriage. Not like that whore. Right? I didn't do drugs. I'm much better than that person. Don't we, don't we do that? Don't we look at and compare ourselves to other people's sin? And it makes us feel what? Better than? Who are you comparing yourself to? A human being. Who are you going to face when you die? God. So how do you compare to God in the sin factor? His sin, your sin, what does it look like? Well, because he don't have any sin, so you're, we're screwed, you know what I'm saying? We don't... <laughs> to get in heaven, you have to be completely blameless, without spot, without sin. You've had to live perfectly and keep the commandments from birth. If you broke one, you're guilty of breaking what? All of it. Then who can get in? Only those who come in Christ with the blood covering their sin. Hallelujah. Amen. Belief in the Son of God. The one way, the only way. Belief in His name, not in their efforts. Belief in Jesus Christ, that He's God, that He was man, that He, he died and rose again. Your sins are forgiven if you believe in Him. Hallelujah. I know we still have to deal with this whole thing of, of sinning after Christ because the devil will use that to say you ain't saved. How can you be a Christian and you did that? Salvation is for everyone who believes and he is the mediator. You are secure in Christ. If your sins are forgiven and you have Christ and you have the spirit, that means when God sees you, he sees his son covering your sin. Now, sanctification is a totally different process. It has nothing to do with salvation. Salvation is a, when a person was going to hell and they believed, and now they're going to heaven. And they're sealed and they're filled with the Spirit upon belief, belief, belief. Now, sanctification is a process of being made holy. That's forever. Where you learn not to sin. Amen? But your position with God is secure. Hallelujah! Don't you need that? Desperately. Desperately. I know I need it desperately. Especially from a works-based love. I'm a, you know, I always have to rely on what he says. I always have to believe what he says. If not, I would I'd disappear. I wouldn't be standing here, that's for sure. Some people, this is too much, and they go back to the old way, and they leave Christ. Let that not be one of you. And he who has been forgiven little what? Loves little. They've minimized what Christ has done. But he who's forgiven much, ready? Oh, loves much. See, it always comes back to your love will always be predicated on your understanding and belief in Christ and what he did for you. The forgiveness of your sins. Amen? Amen? That doesn't make you want to go sin. That makes you want to do what's right. Because you love him. Why? Because he first loved you. John 4, 13, 14. John chapter 4, 13 and 14. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty again. For the water that I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. 
if Christ be in you, as you lean towards God, as you begin to trust God, he becomes a living water of which you'll never be thirsty again. Meaning you won't thirst after identity. You won't thirst after the things of the flesh to fill up your needs. You won't thirst. You will have true joy and love and peace and calmness and hope because you have Christ. Why? Because he forgave your sin. You don't have to go anywhere anymore. Where are you guys going anyway? Why are you leaving Christ? For what? Money? Come on. A job? Just tired? You getting bored? You ready to go get it on? Yeah, what are you leaving Christ for? For what? It's empty, isn't it? And God tells us you're going to be tested. People come. They, some people, it says in, in uh, Matthew 12, it's a very powerful scripture. People come to Christ. Some run down the aisle with joy. Woohoo! Yeah! Jesus, save me. Forgiven. Woohoo! And then he says they get tested. And when, people, when the persecution for believing in Christ and the word comes, they're like, uh, I don't need this crap, bro. Yeah, man, I, they want to fire me. I can't lose my job. I need to hold on to that money. God gave me a job, you know what I'm saying? No. He gave you himself. He gave you himself. And he says, ever ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of, of you before my father. You see, people get tested of what they believe and what they say. I got a letter from Eric, young Eric. He's a brother here. He left, huh? Last night he snuck out. It's been history. Two beautiful kids. His kids are beautiful. Been in and out of jail, right? A long time. Believer in Jesus, but just took off. But he wrote me a letter before, like a few days ago, and he was it was beautiful. Hey, man, what's up? Hey, I'm not trying to manipulate or run game, man. I'm talking to God, and I was pointed to you. I used to be in control, and I was always pointing myself in the wrong direction. I can finally understand submission, bro. I talk to God. I pray. I, I don't know exactly why I'm writing you, dude, but it's the spirit in me. I'm sitting here absorbing things like a sponge. I mean, this is like three days ago. Instead of running like a coward, bro, it hit me today like right in the middle of the chapel. I know why I'm here. I know my purpose. Bob told me it was going to happen. I didn't believe him, dude. I'm not running or leaving, but I, you know, I need help, man. I'm trying to talk to brothers, and I respect and love all of them. And he left. He was, he was tested. I got it, God. I believe now. I'm good. How often does that happen? Well, we're tested. You see, God's going to test you because he knows who it is. Amen? Amen. It's painful to watch people claim Christ and move in with the woman. Or give them up for money. Practice immorality. Whatever it is. With no shame. It's hot. But that's why we don't partner with them. We just turn them over to God. Amen? But for you, God has better things in store. Amen? Right? Aren't you seeing that? Isn't it nice to go to bed without freaking out? High? Drunk? Isn't it nice to go to bed not, not, not angry? Right? Isn't it nice to have hope? That's great! That's Christ! Confessing our sin to God. We've talked about God uh, forgiving our sin, uh, forgiving man's sin. Confessing our sin to God, uh, to God, Psalm 32, verse 5. 
Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. So Christ paid the sin debt. We hear the gospel, we come to Christ, and we are accept accepted. We are forgiven. We have become sons and daughters of God. Amen? Positionally, we are loved. We're, we're hidden in Christ. Our sins are not counted against us. But daily, we have a relationship with God. And in that relationship, we need to repent daily when we need to. We learn to confess our sins to God and one another. We're going to talk about that. There are people out there that teach you don't have to. Well, that's a false freedom. Yeah, you're still loved, but you're in rebellion. God teaches us that as we read in Psalm 32.5. 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Meaning, we're positionally forgiven in Christ, we're filled with the Spirit, we're holy, we're, well, the blood has covered our sin, and now we're building a relationship with God. And in that, if we should sin, God wants us to confess our sins to God and to one another. We're talking about now confessing our sin to God. And as you talk to God, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. If I was speaking right now, vile cursing, and I came to my senses, the Holy Spirit said, hey, that is unholy speech. And I, God wants me to acknowledge that sin and talk to him about it. Amen? Amen. We do it all the time here, don't we? And I go to God and say, Lord, forgive my unwholesome talk. Forgive me for saying the F word, man. God, I just humble, humble myself before you. Cleanse my heart and my mouth. And he forgives us, amen? It's relationship. You, sometimes we associate, I'm forgiven in Christ, but then I sin, and if I sin, then I'm going to hell again. No, that's a works gospel. Come on. Is that love unconditional, yes or no? No. If I love you today and give you eternal life and wash your sins and don't count it against you, but tomorrow I hold it against you, what is that? That's a psycho. You know what I'm saying? That's not steady. That's not the rock. That's not the truth. God's going to deal with our sin. How he deals with it is he says, confess your sins to God and one to another. Judge yourself lest you be what? Judged. By who? God. So he's saying, do it yourself. I don't have to. Amen? You don't love her. You don't love him. You Own it. Judge yourself. Go humble yourself. Ask forgiveness for the way you say and, and you're, now he may not, oh, it's our fault, okay. Own your business, amen? amen? Let other people own theirs. Love unconditionally. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that the proper time he may exalt you. Humility is the way, guys. Somebody did something to you, how long should you go before you forgive them? I don't know, 40 minutes? An hour? How about a week? <laughs> Immediately, forgive them with God. Lord, I forgive what they said and did. I know it was wrong. I hold it not against them. Lord, please help them see and restore our relationship. Now, that person may not be willing to see me. I can still love them. I just am not in fellowship until we are ready to talk. It's okay. I'm okay. I'm following Christ. I'm good. I love you. Well, they're, they're pissed and they're angry and they're spreading rumors. I, I love them. I'm good. I'm not going to partner with them. They, they need to deal with that. When they're ready, I'll receive them and forgive them. Amen? Humble yourselves under the many, mighty hand of God. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. James 4, 6. Listen, when you're prideful, who's opposing you? What chance do you have at that point? Huh? Zero. You want to be pissed at your wife for the week? Because she didn't, you know, meet your need. You want to be prideful? Who are you opposing? You lose. Until you up. <laughs> Come on, don't we all know the state of that? How many of us, when we just, boom, boom, not giving in. <laughs> I'm not going to say I'm sorry. Do that pretty, do them a sinner. You don't know what they did to me. You should have heard of it. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. How well will that go with you? You lose every time, man. Did you forget at that moment what you deserved? I think you did. Did you forget you deserved punishment in hell? 
But God forgave you and you won't forgive. God will oppose you. And anywhere you go, you, you, it'll, you listen, it's sin and rebellion and it leads to what? Death. Aren't you sick and tired of that? Bitterness and anger and resentment, aren't you? Come on. Let's get free today, amen? Amen. All right. Second Corinthians, you were made sorrowful to the point of repentance, for you were made sorrowful according to the will of God. For the, sor for the, for the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret leading to salvation. How many of us got caught in our sin and it wasn't true repentance, we just got caught and felt bad? Is that? Don't mess that up with real repentance. That's not real repentance. Yeah, but I felt bad. It's not real repentance. Yeah, but I, they walked in on me. I felt terrible. I was ashamed. It's not real repentance. Real repentance is one thing. You were made sorrowful to the point of repenting, for you were made sorrowful according to the word of God and the will of God. You see, real repentance is coming to understand that I've sinned against God and God alone. And it grieved him, and my heart is broken for it. It has nothing to do with a person. The prodigal son, what happened when he ran out of everything? He came to his... And then what did he do? No. He said, I've sinned against God. Some people are just coming home just to get some more things. I got my social security now. Good. I got some sneakers, bro. Got some help. Gain some weight. I use those guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. They caught me a few times. I was smoking pot in the back of the dorm, you know. Ah, I said I was sorry. Couldn't wait to get back there again, though. <laughs> That's like a skit, but it's sick, isn't it? Yep. It's called a sick skit. But it's true, isn't it? Hey, sorry, man. You're right, bro. My bad, bro. I... As soon as we walk out, cursing and hating, gossip and slandering, judgment, division. One a brother once have nothing to do with him. Listen, it's over. The world is dark. Death is all around us. People are being beheaded and blown up and killed for 2,000 years. But right now, it is heightened. And we got to get ready here in the United States to share his name and to suffer for him. Or turn around and live for yourself. That's your choice. But for me and my house, we're serving the Lord. Because there's no one else who has the words of eternal life, man. No one else can save my soul. No one else can heal me and love me. No one. And I've received that. My life has changed like crazy. It's real. Jesus is real, man. <coughs> Proverbs 28, 13. We're talking about confessing our sin to God. Whoever conceals their sin does not prosper, does not prosper, does not prosper, does not prosper. You see, when you go to churches and they don't talk about sin, and there are some mega churches, don't talk about sin, and it's all about prosperity. But if you conceal sin, you won't prosper, you won't prosper. That's why they go, why am I not prospering? Well, because maybe you're not dealing with sin in your life first. That's not always the reason, I'm just saying. But if I'm in sin... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grieve the Holy Spirit. I'm still loved by God. 
but I'm not going to prosper. It won't go well with me, right? Some of us know that. When you went out, you you fed the flesh. And okay, so you got some steaks and a TV, and you got a chick for the weekend. Hey, things seem really good for a, for, for a month. Or maybe a year. You moved in with that guy because you weren't trusting God, so you gave yourself to another man and starts beating you. That's, you're not, it's not going well with you. But you've opened yourself up to demons. You've opened yourself up to Satan. You said, I'm going to invite you in because I'm not believing God. And I'm going to play with Satan. I'm going to play with sin just because I need to get some needs met. And things are not going to go well. And even then, God is gracious. And he's kind and he's compassionate to restore us again. Amen. So that we come to the place where I'm not getting high. I'm not going to be jealous. I'm not going to not forgive my mother. I'm going to love because I can. I'm not going to be immoral because I don't have to. Because I'm loved by God and he's enough. I'm free, I'm forgiven, I'm loved, I'm accepted, I'm justified, I'm, 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 I'm in Christ, I got eternal life, I got the mind of Christ, I'm covered in the blood, I'm a child of God, because in Jesus Christ, I'm okay, despite all the evil in my life that was done to me and all the evil I've done, it's all now washed in the blood. I'm forgiven. Psalm 51. The, for me, the greatest psalm in the world. A man who loved God, a man who knew God, a man who watched God move in his life, a man who knew that it wasn't him and his abilities or his talents, that he went from, from a peasant, he went from, from a sheep herder to the king of Israel, King David, who killed a giant as the youngest run of the litter. He knew it was God. You know it's God. You get delivered from meds. You get delivered from, from anxiety. You get delivered from pornography. You get delivered from sin and death. You get delivered from hell. You know it's God. Come on. Amen. You know it's God. Then go tell him. Share it with the world. Proclaim it from the rooftops. Amen. You know it's him. David knew. And David messed up. But he didn't practice it. He committed adultery and murder, but he didn't practice it. But he grieved God severely, and God punished him and dealt with him because God loved David. Amen. Because David was his son, and so are you, Philip, and Doug, and Terry, and Brian. We're his sons. You're his daughters. How much does he love you? Who would give his life for you? He made David a king. And David talks to his father. Have mercy on me, O oh God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you may be justified, Father, in your words and, and blameless in your judgment. I'm guilty. Behold, I was brought in forth. I was brought forth in iniquity. And sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth and the inward being. And you teach me wisdom in the secret heart, in the secret place. Wash me, purge me with high soap, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. 
Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then, then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from the blood guiltless, O oh God, O oh God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. All right, it's all there, isn't it? Following God, I love the Lord. Oh, I screwed up. Look what I've done. He went, I'm going to have to hide the sin. i got to conceal it. I was an adulterer. Oh, crap. I'm in trouble. The people will know. I've slept with a woman who's not my wife. Oh, now she's pregnant. I know what I'll do. I'll have to, I'll have to bring the husband home so he can lay with his wife. And, and then when they have the baby, they'll think it's, it's theirs. But he wouldn't do that. He was a loyal soldier. Now what? I have to get rid of him. I'm going to send him to the front lines that he might be killed. And King David had adulterous affair, and then he killed the husband. And we don't know how long he went with the, but he says his, his bones were breaking. Don't you remember when you were sick? Now, I'm not saying everyone because it suffered because of, of sin now. Okay, you, you suffer for doing evil or you suffer for doing good. Amen? It's just, that's the way it is. Rather suffer for, for good. Amen, right? But let us own when we suffer for evil. But King David was suffering for evil. His, he was silent. He knew he was wrong. He, he didn't face it. He just kind of went on and moved the woman in. And then he married her. And she got pregnant. But she, but then the baby died. Things went downhill. How many times things have to go down on hill when we know we're in sin? When we know we're rebelling against that? How long will it take Eric? Who walks out on God and walks out on God's people. How long? What's going to have to go? What's he going to have to go through? But I hope he comes to his senses. Amen. But see, a lot of people, they say, listen, I can't sin in the church, so i got to go. They don't tell you that, but that's what they're saying. How long? What, what, what is James, our brother, going to go through? Who left? Who's been in and out of hospitals the last three weeks? How long? Before you... Get it out. And share your transgressions with God. And receive the washing of his spirit. Right? Isn't it great? Isn't it great to be forgiven? To know you have a God who loves you and you can tell him the darkest thing. You can bring him the, the most hurtful bondage and and he forgives you. Yeah. <clears throat> forgiveness and confession of sin toward one another. We've looked at God's forgiveness towards men. We've lo looked at confessing sin to God. We, we look now at forgiveness and confession of sin toward one another. You see, we first must have it with God vertically, amen? We first must have come to our senses that we're guilty, that our sin deserves hell, that we receive Christ in the Spirit, and now we're living for him, amen? amen. And in that, we learned how we confess our sin to God and, and talk to him, and, and because we're completely forgiven by his shed blood. And that must relate to how we treat one another. Galatians 6, 1, 2. Galatians 6, verses 1 and 2. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness and keep watching yourself, lest you too be tempted. Love is always trying to restore. Come on. Real love is restoring a brother that's in sin. And if you are wishing evil on your brother, then that's hatred and jealousy and anger 
and resentment. That's not love. How many of us have seen a brother finally get caught and go, finally, man. Couldn't stand that person, man. Oh, that's love. God could stand him. You know why? Because Jesus died for him. And God knew about his weakness and his sin and is trying to help him. Because isn't that what love is? Trying to help a brother come out of, out of bondage by telling him the truth. Ephesians 4, 31, 32. Let all bitterness, not some of it, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you. All of it. Some of us are going to get rid of it today. Well, if you want, that's up to you. <laughs> along, get rid of all that along with malice. Instead, be kind to one another. Don't manifest it. If you're not kind, say, God, help me to be kind. Don't try to be kind on your own. It'll only work for a couple of days. <laughs> for some people, a couple of minutes. <laughs> Lord, change me. Come on, come on, honey. Lord, I'm not kind. Oh, Lord, I don't like people. Oh. <laughs> right? Get honest. In the inner being, get honest. So you can get free. Be tenderhearted. Forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. How should you forgive your neighbor? Like Christ forgave who? You. And what did he do for you? Does he count your sin against you? No. Does he throw away as far as east as west? Yeah. Does he not remember it? No. That's love, right? Then why do you remember your neighbor's sin? Why do you remember your mom's sin? Why do you remember your own sin? Why do you remember your father's sin? Why do you remember the neighbor that molested your sin? Why do you remember the people that beat you and rejected you? Why do you remember their sin? Forgive as Christ has forgiven you. And you will be I know, it's tough. Some are pondering. I still hate that. Uh, they don't deserve it, John. Let me tell you what they did. I don't want to hear it. Don't tell me what they did. Does God know what they did? Yeah. Does God know what you did? Yeah. Does Christ forgive you? Yeah. Then forgive them. End of story. Come on. Come on, you little love freaks. Come on. <laughs> right? Freedom. 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 <laughs> Forgiveness and confession of sin toward each other. Matthew six fourteen. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. I left out the other part of that, but if you don't forgive, your heavenly Father will not forgive you. Right. Yeah. Amen. So that's going to go back to relationship. Judge lest you be. Judge. Does God still love you? Yeah. You're still forgiven in Christ? Yeah. But as his son or daughter, if you choose not to, you're going to struggle. Amen. Things ain't going to go well with you when there's known sin. You don't just assume someone's in sin. That's ridiculous. Some people are suffering for good. Matthew 6, 14. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. What do you do with that grievance? Come on, what do you do? Forgive! Yeah, but they cut in line the seventh time. They took the last potato. <laughs> Forgive as you've been forgiven. Is that an exorcism? What's going on? That was weird. It's true, it happens. 
We haven't got to that, but man, we got to go and cast out demons. Amen. We got to lay hands on the sick. Come on, we got to let God use us, man. Right? God's just waiting to use us. Colossians 3, verses 12 and 13. You are the people of God. He loved you and chose you for his own. So then you must clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. You must, you must clothe yourself because you have the righteousness of what? Christ. You have the power and the spirit to be compassionate, kind, humble, gentle, and patience. Be tolerant with one another and forgive one another. When any of you has a complaint against someone else, please spread it to everyone else. No, it doesn't say that. <laughs> Whenever you have a complaint against someone else, you must forgive one another just as the Lord has forgiven you. you got to get rid of the complaints. <clears throat> Complaining is sin. Do we have real issues? Yeah. Do people fail us? Yeah. Yes. But where there is complaining and grumbling, it's not of God. Because who, who are you really complaining against? Yourself. God. Does God know everything that's happening to you? Yes. Does God want you to trust him? Yes. So then why are you complaining about your situation? You're not trusting him. You're trusting in yourself. You're trusting in what you think should be done or not be done. Come on. Amen. Which leads to anxiety and worry, which leads to anger and frustration, which leads to continued sin. God know you didn't get that job? It didn't surprise him. It's a fifth job in a row. Yeah, right. So what's the problem? Well, whatever it is, God's going to reveal it because he's either going to give me a job or he's going to show me why I'm not getting a job. But the first order of business is to love God and love people and be in fellowship and submit to one another. Come on. And trust God. <clears throat> Luke 17, 3, 4. So watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. It doesn't say, don't say nothing. Hold it in. <laughs> Right? There's, there's action. And if they repent, forgive them. So in other words, if a, someone sins against you, there is, a, there is a godly rebuke. There is godly correction. Some of us hold it in or we don't say nothing. That's not solving any problems. That's just fostering sinful behavior. And that's being a pleaser of people. And in that, you're not doing God's will. How old is this young man? Eight. Is that your son? Okay. So if you say, son, I need you to be quiet. And he says, no way, mom. And he keeps making noises. Right? Do you love him? Should you correct him? And if you don't, what's going to happen? You're going to enable bad behavior. And he's going to be spoiled. And he's going to think he can do whatever he wants. I'm using that as an illustration. You follow me? A good mom, a good father is going to what? Tell the truth to their sons and daughters. Do, should we correct in Christ? Yeah. Should we admonish? Yeah. Confess? Yeah. Instruct? Yeah. Rebuke? Yeah. Yes. I know, I know a lot of the church leaves that out, and it's not of God. I'm just, I'm, it's not. Because all of that goes is what Jesus said to do and to live. Amen? Amen. And it's in that where we get convicted. It's in that where we lose stuff sometimes because we're rebellious, where God's trying to bring us to a place of receiving correction to learn to submit to God and to one another because it will go well with your soul if you submit to one another. It will not go well with you if you're complaining all the time or you're resisting God and resisting leadership. It will never go well. You'll always be pissed. You'll always be running. You'll always be bitter. Isn't that why we go from relationship to relationship? Because once we get hurt, we don't know how to love unconditionally, we find the next person. Until they screw up, and then we go to the next person. Come on. Right? 
It's hot, isn't it? Is it hot in here? It's hot in here. Not hot as hell, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Even if they sin against you seven times in a day, and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. Is it a choice? No. Well, listen, following God's always a choice, dear. Do you have a choice to do your will or the Father's will? Yes? We do. So Jesus is saying, I'm telling you here, even if they sit against you seven times a day, seven times come back, you're saying, I'm sorry, you must forgive them. He's telling you, you have the power now to forgive us. I've forgiven you, but you've got to choose it. He's telling you what to do, and you get to go, no. Okay? You're going to suffer. For evil. Or you listen to God and go, I'm sorry. Or oh, you know what? I forgive you. It's the eighth time today. The Bible said seven, so you're over your limit by one. But I'm going to keep forgiving you because I love you. Yeah, but why? Because I've been forgiven. That's kind of weird. No, I, I've been forgiven. And you came to me and asked forgiveness, so I'm going to forgive you. Amen? Amen. Amen. 70 times seven. We got guys, man, they, the first couple of months, they're up in the office every day. So he blew it again. Cursed out my, uh, you know, cat. He was so nice, I was actually mad at him, you know. How do you get so nice? <laughs> a couple months later, I don't even see. Some of the guys that graduate, I never even see. I don't even know. That. Are they still here? You know why? Because they started to get settled. They started walking in forgiveness. Come on, they, they, we had to deal with some heart issues. God, you know, they reached out to God. They were, that's when it happens. It happens when you reach out to God, not reach out to man. I'm telling you. Some of us are so codependent, we're still relying on a person. Oh, there he comes again. Oh, there she is. The queen of heaven. Uh, I just got to be honest with you. Anyone or anything where you depend on more than God is satanic. It's from Satan. It's a lie. It's not of God. Because then who gets the credit? That person. Let God be your everything. Come on. I don't know what job. Lord, I don't know about this woman. Is she the right one? He'll, he'll show you. He'll show you right away. And then he'll even tell you, leave her. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I really want her. No, leave her. Okay, all right. They don't even say, well, she's the one. I'm going to show you. I'm going to change your house. Oh, okay, really? How long? Don't worry about it. Oh. But I can't wait. Yes, you can. <laughs> Is anyone of you, among you sick? Let them call the elders. Remember now we're talking about forgiving the brethren, confessing sin to one another once we've received God's love and forgiveness. Uh, anyone sick among you, let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in, in the name of the Lord. And the prayer often in faith will make the sick person well. I wonder how often we, we follow this. <laughs> Must have been that burger there. When he was young, they called him the burping baby. <laughs> if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Again, the prayer often in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. So he's talking about people that are sick to pray over them, to anoint them with oil. Some will confess sin. If they have sinned, and they'll be forgiven. James 5, 14 and 15. James chapter 5, 14 and 15. So if you are about to offer your gift to God at the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you, so if you are about to give your gift to God, you're at the altar, and you remember someone has something against you, 
It says, leave your gift there in front of the altar. Go at once and make peace with your brother and then come back and offer your gift to God. Keith, come on up if you could. In other words, God wants you to have peace today, amen? amen? Not just today, but every day. So if you have something, or somebody has something against you, or you have something against somebody, God is saying, instead of coming up praying, stop and go find your brother and make peace. And God will then will hear your prayers. You know, it's like the brother who says, oh, God, I love you. Oh, great God, I love you. Right? And then he says, but I hate that guy. I hate that guy. God says, I'm not hearing your prayers right now. As usual, God always is asking for a response from his people that hear his word. Let us go now and honor one another in the prayer room. Let's go to the throne room of God together and close our eyes. Forgetting everything that's happening right now. Just close everyone. Just close your eyes. And if you don't want to pray, you don't have to. You can sleep. But if you want to pray, God is going to speak to your heart right now. First and of, and of most importance, if there be any here that are without Christ, that do not believe in Jesus, that don't trust in Jesus, God would ask you to repent today, to turn to him to receive the forgiveness of your sin and to receive his love and the gift of eternal life. If there be anyone here that says, when I die, I don't know where I'm going. I, I know I'm guilty, but I've not trusted or believed in Jesus Christ that he's God. I've heard. But today, I want to know him. I want to be forgiven of all my sin. I want to call on his name, and I want to be saved. And I'm, I'm asking you, would you pray for me, Brother John? If that's you, would you say, or just raise your hand and say, pray for me, Brother John. Bless you, man. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Yeah, amen. I remember I did that. With every eye closed, right where you're at. I did that years ago. And I want to be honest. It's not saying a prayer that saves you. It's not you saving you. It's you calling on the one that can. Would you, right where you're at, say, Jesus, I'm guilty. Jesus, I deserve that. Jesus, I heard that you're God. Just tell him that. And I want to receive you today. I want to be forgiven. I want to know that I'm loved and forgiven and accepted. Would you, right where you are, say, Jesus, I call on your name. Save me. Give me faith to believe in you right now. That you are loved. That you are accepted. That you are forgiven. Father, I pray over them right now that they would be good ground. Father, I pray that what they've heard, they would believe. God, that they would understand. They would have wisdom and understanding. And God, they would know that they would know that they have eternal life. And only you can reveal that to them, Father. Because today we've the word has gone forth. Thank you, Lord, for them that have the courage to call on your name, Jesus. Bless them, Father. They can't save themselves, but it's a miracle, Lord. That when someone does, you save them. And secondly, if you're a believer in Christ today, and I want to I want to believe that everyone that didn't raise their hands knows Jesus, is trusting in Jesus as God. But you're still struggling to believe that your sins are forgiven. And I know that's that's where the enemy tries to hurt us. If you're not fully believing that your sins are forgiven, then you're not totally believing. Would you confess your unbelief to God right now? Ask Him to increase your faith that you may know, that you may know that your sins are completely forgiven and you are a son or a daughter. So if you're a believer here today, 
and you're struggling to say, I, I still struggle with forgiving myself and some things I've done. I just, oh, I still have a performance-based love. If that's you, would you just do me the honor of saying, pray for me, Brother John. Yeah, bless you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, me too. I'm with you. Sometimes I struggle to believe that too. Anyone else? But yes, bless you, bless you, bless you. Amen. Yes. So right now, right where you're at, I'm going to join in with you. Let's go to God together. Lord, forgive me for my unbelief. Tell him I'm not believing you fully. Increase my belief. Increase my faith. You want it? You ask him right now. I pray over them right now, Father, that they would have fresh revelation. They would have understanding that Jesus, that you that you are God, but that you're, their sins are completely gone. They're washed in the blood. They're, they're never to be remembered by you, but they would know that, Father. And thirdly, as a believer, if you're here today and you have something against someone, or you know someone has something against you, will you choose to forgive that person right now? And if they're not here, will you still choose to forgive them? Whether they have something against you, you get something against them, will you go, will you choose right now to forgive whoever they are, whoever that person may be right now, you tell God, I choose to forgive them and not count what they've done against me, against them. Would you make that choice if that's you? This is very personal. It may be your father. It might be someone who abandoned you. It may be a brother in this room. Would you just choose to forgive him as Christ forgave you? Say, Lord, I forgive you for not loving them. I've hated them. And right now, I choose to forgive them. Maybe they've even passed away. You can forgive them right now. Or maybe it was you that sinned against them, and they're not here. You can go to the Father right now. Lord, forgive me for hurting my father for my, or hurting my brother. They may be gone. It's okay. Let God wash you and forgive you right now for your sin. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And lastly, if that person's here, would you sometime today, not tomorrow, privately, would you go and meet with your brother or sister? You have something against them or you know they have something against you. Would you go with the offer of reconciliation? Would you go and make peace? And go tell them you forgive them. Go tell them you love them. Or go ask forgiveness for what you've done. If they don't receive that, that's okay. Would you get free today? Father, I pray right now over each and every person, where there's unforgiveness, where there's hurt, that they would be free. That they would be a people that forgives as you've forgiven them. And God, that people would know them by their love. I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. May God bless you and enjoy your day with the Lord.